The central dogma of genetics is made up of two main steps. That's what we'll be talking about in this video. All cells need to make proteins. DNA provides the instructions for making these proteins. The DNA that a cell has determines which proteins it can make. The proteins the cell makes determines its traits. The reason you're a human and not a cat or a dog is your DNA. For a cell to build a protein, it needs the proper instructions. You can think of these instructions like an instruction book for a Lego set. Or instructions for putting together an IKEA cabinet. The instructions don't become a part of the final structure, but those instructions are needed to put the pieces together. It's important to realize the cells do not randomly combine amino acids in no particular order and simply hope for the best. Protein assembly is always guided based on instructions from nucleic acids. The information in a DNA molecule is based on the order or sequence of the nucleotides. There are four different letters that are used to build DNA molecules, and the instructions for one protein may be thousands of nucleotides long. The ribosomes are where the proteins will be assembled. This is where the instructions are needed. The instructions are in the nucleus and the ribosomes are in the cytoplasm. This is why we need RNA. RNA is able to store information like DNA but it is a smaller, temporary molecule, and it is mobile. The process of making RNA from a DNA template is called transcription. The DNA is not destroyed during transcription. It's still there. In transcription, you can think of transcription as making a photocopy of one page of a book. The book or DNA is not used up or destroyed in that process. Now the letters in DNA are similar to the letters in RNA. But DNA has A, T, C, and G. RNA has A, U, C, and G. And through a process called complementary base pairing, if there's a T on the DNA strand, there will be an A on the RNA strand. If there's a G, it'll be a C. If there's a C, it'll be a G. And if there's an A on the DNA, then there will be a U on the RNA strand. Translation is the process of taking the information in the nucleic acid language that only has four letters, translating it into the protein language, a language that has 20 different letters or building blocks. So the information in the nucleic acid language is based on groups of three nucleotide letters. Each group of three letters in the DNA or RNA is called a codon. Each codon results in one amino acid added to the growing protein. 
So every three letters in the nucleic acid language ends up coding for one letter in the protein language. We can see we have our DNA template, and making a molecule of RNA from that is known as transcription. That mRNA molecule, or messenger RNA, is then able to travel to the ribosome where translation takes place, and where every group of three letters, the codon, is translated into one amino acid. Now this grouping of the letters in the RNA into an amino acid, that translation is based on what's called the genetic code. And what's amazing is that the genetic code is universal. All codons in the genetic code are true for all life as we know it, whether we're talking about bacteria or plants or animals, fungus or humans, this genetic code is universal. This means that with the same DNA sequence, which is a set of instructions, all cells will make the same protein. Here we can see a look at the genetic code. You are not expected to memorize this genetic code, but I do want you to see how it's organized, where for any three letters of RNA, let's just pick one, C-A-U. We'll define where that is on our chart. We have to know that the first letter means we're going to look in that second row. A, as the second letter, that means we're going to be on the third column. And then U, as the last letter, means we're going to be at the top of the box. And we see the codon C-A-U codes for the amino acid histidine. So the amino acid histidine is going to be coded for every time CAU is found in an mRNA message. Now it's important to realize that these codons are read in groups of three, and so translation, the process of making a protein, always starts at a specific codon known as the start codon. That codon is AUG, and that sort of sets the process of translation going. There are also three codons that do not code for an amino acid. Those are the stop codons, UAA, UAG, and UGA. Again, for this class, you do not need to memorize the codons, but I do want you to understand a bit about how the genetic code table is set up. So it turns out that there are 64 possible codons. And that's because you can have any one of four letters for the first letter, any one of four letters for the second letters, and any one of four letters for the third letter. So 64 possible combinations. But there are only 20 different possible amino acids. This tells us that most amino acids will have more than one codon coding for them. This is known as degeneracy in the genetic code. Now every mRNA molecule starts with the same codon and that is the start codon. That is where translation begins. But there are three codons that do not code for an amino acid. Those are the stop codons. Now I've emphasized that this genetic code is universal, but how does that really help us? What does that mean? The genetic code is universal, meaning that all living organisms on Earth use the same genetic code. It's not that they all have the same DNA sequence, but how that DNA is translated and how those RNA molecules are interpreted to become proteins is the same. If a gene is transferred into another organism, that organism is able to make the same protein. And so when we look here at this picture, it kind of looks like a plant, but it's glowing. What's going on here? Well, this is a tobacco plant, but what has happened is that at a one cell stage, a gene was transferred into this tobacco plant. The gene that was transferred in is actually the gene that causes fireflies to glow. And this plant is able to make that animal protein, and that protein is able to be functional. So just having a set of DNA instructions, we now have a plant that is able to glow using a mechanism similar to fireflies.
But what happens when there's mistakes? That's what we'll discuss in our next video.